Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, we're gonna be seeing how the brand new 2020 MacBook Air handles video editing. We're gonna look at some 1080p and also some 4K. And who knows, maybe we will even connect this bad boy up to it. This is an eGPU and see how that helps depending on what results we get. Now, as you guys see, I'm here in my basement. I am not in the office. You guys probably know why. I hope all of you guys are staying safe out there and that everything is going well for you guys. We just got these new MacBook Airs and I know a lot of you guys are asking about it. Some of you guys need a new machine that can do some video editing. So we'll see how this handles it. Now, these new 2020 MacBook Airs were kind of unexpected. Not only did Apple give us a new key keyboard, the same one on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is excellent. They also doubled the base amount of SSD without charging extra for it. And they even lowered the price by hundred dollars if you go for that dual core model like it had previously. Uh, but they also gave us an option to get an i5 or an i7 quad core processor. Now these processors are Intel's 10th generation, 10 nanometer processors, which should use less power and hopefully put out less heat. But the even more important part is not only do we have twice the cores now in a MacBook Air, which it should be good, but the graphics that are in here are the best Iris Plus G7 that's available for these chips. So Apple didn't cheap out on the cheaper ones like some other manufacturers do. They got the better graphics and we'll see how that helps for video editing. Let's go ahead and start out with a quick Geekbench 5 benchmark. Okay, and there we go. That is a really respectable performance difference between the previous MacBook Air and even kind of comparing with the MacBook Pro 1.4 gigahertz 2019 version as a quad core. The single core is quite a bit higher. The multi-core is about 22% lower though. Now let's go ahead and take a look at graphics performance. I'm gonna go ahead and run the metal test and we'll see how this compares to the base MacBook Pro. Bam, you guys can see that performance difference uh, compared to the previous MacBook Air and the current base MacBook Pro. That is a big difference in graphics performance and programs like Final Cut and even DaVinci Resolve as well, they are really focusing on graphics performance now. Final Cut redid their whole metal engine to work off of graphics and that is great. That gives me some great hopes for this MacBook Air. And now let's test out Blackmagic's raw speed test to see what the CPU and graphics can handle for playback. I'm not gonna do 8K, I think that's a little optimistic. Let's switch it to 4K and we're getting 77 FPS for metal. So this is showing that with 12 to one, this can handle 4K 60 FPS Blackmagic Raw. Of course, we're just getting started. It's not you know, adding any effects or anything like that. So we're gonna have to see for ourselves. Now let's jump into Final Cut Pro, which is probably the best choice as far as vi the video editing program for an Ultrabook like the MacBook Air. It's very well optimized. And I'm gonna start out with stabilizing a 20 second clip. It's moving along pretty quick right there. Of course, nothing like my Mac Pro, which does this in like four seconds or something like that. But we have a time of 35 seconds. So. That is pretty good. I think before we were closer to a minute or something like that and the base 13 inch MacBook Pro, that took 45 seconds. Before we move on to our timeline smoothness test, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning, with so much to explore, real projects to work on, and support from other creators. I know like me, a lot of us are working from home now and man, is it tough to stay on track. That's why I would recommend Thomas Frank's Productivity Masterclass. You'll also find classes on video editing, photography, graphics design, animation, web development, and even things like business. Skillshare offers short classes designed for real life, so you can learn and grow with classes that fit your busy routine. Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 500 people who click that link in the video description, and after that, it is only around $10 a month. This is the perfect time to get some new skills, to learn, to thrive, instead of just sitting at home. So go and check out Skillshare. So let's start out with 1080p, because I know a lot of you guys might be buying this laptop for 1080p editing. This is a clip from the S20 Plus. They're super steady. That was me running there. I don't have much 1080p footage because I almost never shoot it. Since this is Intel's 10th generation, it has the latest decoding and encoding chips. So playing this back, super, super smooth. The CPU didn't even go above 30%, it's at 20 now. Graphics at 
and temperatures, you guys might not see that, but 75 degrees Celsius. So staying cool, fans are off. Let's just do a little bit of correction or adjustments and it's still super smooth. Our CPU GPU usage is basically the same. Um, yeah, for standard corrections, it seems to be doing just fine. Let's get something a little bit tougher. Let's throw on a LUT over here, just in case you wanna work with some log footage. Let's play this back. Still handling it pretty good. The fans are spinning up now because it's getting hotter, but uh, not bad, maybe a little bit less smooth here. And we are playing back at full resolution. This is not um, better playback quality. Now let's kick this up a notch. This is 4K 30 FPS footage from my Mavic Air. It's playing it back well. And as far as smoothness, okay, I could tell it's not as smooth as 1080p. It's lagging behind just a little bit, but still not that bad. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of corrections. I'll pull down my highlights a little bit. And with those color corrections, it is still playing back just fine. It seems like it barely hit it at all. Nice and smooth, um, no real problems. So even for some minor corrections, you're gonna be okay. Now scrolling through, definitely not as smooth as the 1080p. We could tell a difference, but this is still workable. Now let's take it a step further and let's kick on a lot here. And there you go. Um, you could see just by the time code how much of that is jumping that we are definitely dropping frames. Um, I can switch it to better performance over here and that's gonna basically drop our resolution to maybe half or so. Uh, yeah, visually, you could tell it does not look sharp anymore. You can't use this to judge focus off of it, but playing it back now, now it is still not as smooth as 1080p, but getting there and that's with the LUT applied. We went from about 65, 70% graphics usage to 17 and the CPU went down as well. Let's go ahead and run a couple of the standard export tests to see how this thing handles compared to the base MacBook Pro. The first one that I want to run is Bruce X. That way you guys can run it as well in Final Cut with your system and see what kind of a difference you guys can get. So let's go ahead and go. This is very interesting. The graphics card is not being maxed out. I think the most I saw it hit is about 30, 35%, where my other systems would pretty much max it out and get the task done very quickly. Uh, and then as far as temps, the system will hit 95 degrees Celsius, 98, bounce down to like 82, 85, and then back up. It's almost like it's throttling down the graphics card to keep it cool. But with that said, the fans are basically silent right now. I can't hear anything. Okay, so, Wow, I think that's the longest I've ever waited for Bruce X to be done. That is just over twice as long as the 13 inch base model MacBook Pro that also has a quad core i5 processor. Very interesting, that computer has a much weaker graphics card, at least with the benchmarks, but in reality, wow, okay. So let's go ahead and open up our 4K project. Now let's go ahead and export this and then we'll see how it compares. Right off the bat, we were at 100 degrees Celsius after about 10 seconds. And now we are a minute and a half through and we are just hitting 7%. I think this is a good time to talk about thermal performance. If you guys didn't know the previous MacBook Air, it did not have a heatsink that was connected to the actual fan. Now, unfortunately, with the new MacBook Air, they did change the design of the cooler, making it a little bit more efficient and effective, but it is still not connected, unlike the 13 inch base MacBook Pro, which is, as we see by the temperatures, I mean, we are just being slowed down with this export just because of heat. We just hit 25% and it's been over five minutes. Comparing it to the base 13 inch MacBook Pro, that's about 12 minutes. So this is definitely close to twice as slow because of thermals. So let's pull out this eGPU, plug it in. And I'm just curious if our main issue is thermals, if we offset the heat, from the internal, at least the graphics to the external, how much is that gonna help us? All right, let's plug this thing in. It's spinning up right here, excellent. Let's hit our preferences. And here, bam, we can switch over to our external graphics. I'm gonna restart Final Cut just to make sure you guys are seeing it's starting to glitch up already. We're hitting 100 degrees still. Okay, so in activity monitor, you guys can see that it's still using the built-in GPU, not the external graphics card unit. That's why we're heating up so much. I'm just gonna use this basic exporting setting. Hopefully it will use the eGPU for exports because we can always edit 
in the better uh, playback, better performance mode instead of the better quality mode. And after a few minutes here, our built-in graphics is being used, but just a sliver. It's mainly relying on the built-in graphics still, and that's why it is still 100 degrees Celsius, super hot, and it's taking forever to export. So I guess an eGPU is not the right solution for us. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna export this 1080p project. This is two LUTs with film grain. Look how smooth it is. That's a full 1080p quality. Maybe this system will be decent for 1080p. Okay, <laughs> I've lost all hope. It's been over a minute and 15 seconds and we just hit 9%. Yes, 1080p is easier and we got more graphics usage out of it, but we're still at 100% the whole time. It's taking forever and Final Cut just quit on us. I, I don't know why that is rare for, for Final Cut just to quit when we have no crazy graphics or animations. It, maybe it's just running too hot for too long. So my takeaway is don't buy the 2020 MacBook Air for video editing. If you have to do some video editing, use Final Cut. I'm not even gonna test out DaVinci Resolve, let alone Premiere Pro. It's just, it's, it, no, don't do that. If you have to use Final Cut 1080p, editing will be pretty good. 4K, if you're doing that, go put it into the better performance mode, not better quality. You can get by, but when you're gonna be exporting it, it's just gonna take too dang long to export. And with temps constantly at 100 degrees Celsius, I would be kind of worried about long-term reliability. So that's disappointing. Apple, why did you guys not put in a heat pipe from the cooler to the fan? This thing would have been better than the MacBook Pro base with more SSDs and better keyboard and less money. But because of that, it is just not cutting it at all. So I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. <laughs> if you need something that's portable or something that's cheap, get the base MacBook Pro. There's some great deals out there right now, actually. I'll leave some links in the video description. And if you guys wanna see some other info on this laptop, I'll have a little video right over there to the other channel, the tech channel. It's actually a great laptop for a lot of regular use cases. Super snappy with that 10 gen, fast single core results, but video editing, let's not do it. Definitely go and check out a Skillshare, especially if you guys have some extra time right now, get that free two month trial. There's a lot of great content on there and I appreciate them for supporting the channel. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.